Hey everybody, this is Roy Kennedy, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Ankh versus Kemet. Let's get into it. So these are two different Egyptian-themed area control games. Um, one has been out for a while. This is the Blood and Sand version, so this is the re-implementation of Kemet. And I hadn't played Kemet at all until recently, and I've had tons and tons of people tell me that I really need to play Kemet because I would enjoy it a ton. And then Ankh is a brand new game from Simon and Eric Lang that just recently came out. Um, I had played it on Tabletop Simulator early on when it was still on Kickstarter, but I really enjoy the game. And let's take a look at how both these games are slightly different. So. The action systems in these games are different because in Ankh, there's one action board that all the players are kind of choosing which ones to do. So you're kind of like going down a track and being like, okay, well, I'm going to take one action and that's going to push this here and then I take a second action. And they can be things like moving or gaining new followers or trying to like upgrading your Ankh powers to maybe like get some different things out there um, to be able to do stuff. Then in Kemet, you have, each player has their own player board that they're taking actions on. I um, mean, having to choose, like, do I want to get more prayer points to be able to spend on different technologies and things like that? Or do I want to be able to move my guys around? Or do I want to be trying to upgrade my pyramids and things like that? So there's lots of different ways you can manipulate the actions in both of these games. The action systems feel very different. Onk is kind of interesting because that communal action that you have of like, okay, if I take this this turn, is another player going to take that and then end the round and go straight into combat? Or maybe I need to do this before combat. In Kimmet, you kind of like know which actions people have covered up and you can kind of determine like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and do this or I'm going to need a little bit more of that. And it doesn't feel as limiting as far as like how the actions go just because, um, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing or a good thing because I really love the way Ankh does it a lot just because the actions are so interesting as you're trying to determine what the other players are doing. And then in Kimmet, the actions are also very impactful because they matter to you the order in which you do them in. The other thing with these games, these are both games with lots of miniatures in them as well. So you're gonna be playing the game and there's beautiful miniatures on the board. I think Ankh just straight up wins the miniatures overall. Simon does an amazing job with their miniatures, um, and the miniatures just look insanely beautiful as they're out on the board. Kimmet, the miniatures are passable, they look good, and it's cool to get the different monsters out on the board. You do feel like you have something cool when you're able to upgrade the technology enough to get one of those monsters. They're gonna help you out in combat. They're gonna have cool different special abilities. In Ankh, the, I actually feel like in Kimmet, you get more monsters that you feel like are your own. In Kimmet, there's kind of like three monsters out there for the game, and then you have to kind of race to try to get it. And sometimes you could get there too late, and you're not actually even going to get a monster for the game. But it really depends on like how many how players are like upgrading those Ankh powers and things like that. Um, but yeah, the miniatures are great in both games, but Ankh wins for sure in the miniatures department. Um, area control in the game. Ankh is very much all about the different area control and controlling different areas that have different types of things. It's all about the victory points for area control. In Kimmet, you get points for area control as well, but it's very much a back and forth of stealing different locations. Like, oh, I have this obelisk and you're getting points off this obelisk, let me steal that from you. Oh, I have these different pyramids, let me take things over. And it's like racing up a track to a certain score number, so you're trying to get to 10 points to win the game. And then in Ankh, you're trying to race to uh, basically get to the very top of the like divinity track to remain a god of Egypt and not be forgotten in time. So in Ankh it's like a huge score track but you're still trying to get to the very top of it. In Kemet there's some points that you're just tug of warring back and forth over. So I definitely like the area control in the game for both games um, because they're very different and interesting. This feels a lot more like I guess you're we trying to figure out how to min max those points and in Kimmet there's a lot of combats going back and forth as you're trying to fight each other over different areas and locations um so the other things is how you upgrade kind of like your technology or upgrade your egyptian civilization in Kimmet there's tons of different like tech cards you can upgrade as you upgrade your pyramid so if you upgrade your pyramid you're allowed to buy different um, of the different technologies that you can get. And those are gonna give you lots of cool special abilities as the game goes along. And there's limited quantities of each of those. So certain players might not be able to get the ones that they're going for. And you can kind of try to race up that track to grab the certain ones. Maybe this one gives you a permanent victory point. That's amazing. Maybe this one allows you to unlock a monster. Maybe this one makes it super efficient for you to get prayer points so you can do the actions you wanna do. Um, in Ankh, it's all about racing up and all the players, like things that they unlock when they do um, basically to unlock their different Ankh powers are gonna be the same so you have to kind of choose because you're only going to get to do two are you going to do like temple attune to be able to get extra strength in temples or are you going to like do pyramid attune to get extra units on the board there's all sorts of different things you can do but all the players are symmetrical in those powers that they're going to upgrade 
there is a race during that to to try to race to gain monsters as the game goes along. So that's another interesting aspect of like, okay, I need to upgrade before the other players upgrade so that way I can get the monster because that monster has a really good ability that I need. Um, so there's an interesting aspect of that in Ankh. So they both have really cool technology things that you're upgrading your Egyptian civilization in. The next thing is combat. How does combat work? Well, they're both card combat as well. In Kimmich, it's all about like number of units and number of strength. You each have cards in your hand that you're going to be hiding behind and like trying to re play it out and reveal at the same time. Once you've played all this stuff out, you get your cards back and there's certain things where you're trying to just outdo your opponent's strength. You can play really strong strength cards, but then you're gonna wound yourself. Or you can do things to try to like defend from the wound so that way your units don't go away and they just have to retreat. Um, there's interesting combat. I love card combat where you have to try to outthink your opponent and think what strength they have and like pay attention to what cards they've already played. Onks combat is also very similar in a lot of ways. You both play cards out and flip them, reveal them face up, and you're not quite sure um, who's who's going to be doing the different things in combat. In Ankh, it's going to be determined. Like you can have the same or different players from different um, factions in the same area, but combat isn't going to happen until it triggers on the little action track there. Um, so we'll be able to take a certain number of actions, then combat triggers, and then everybody that's in there has to choose cards and pick which ones they want. There's a lot of really interesting choices in the Ankh combat cards because you can do things like plague and remove a whole bunch of units off the board if you spend enough followers. Whoever bids the most followers will be able to take that out. You can just straight up try to do it with brute strength. There's another lot of interesting things like like doing famines and things like that or or being able to do like um, things to give you extra victory points uh, if you're able to use those cards properly at the right time. So there's interesting aspects that can kind of make it a lot more strategic because you might not necessarily want to be winning the battle, you just want to play the correct card. In this game, in uh, Ankh, you're going to be playing your cards out until you play a specific card that allows you to pick those cards back up. So you kind of have to choose, like, do I want to just lose this battle to have my cards back for a stronger battle in the future? So there's all those interesting twists and decisions that you have to do in the game. Um, I think both games are great and a lot of fun. I really enjoy both of them. There's tons more aspects to the game. The fact that they both have different boards and Ankh, you get to split the areas of the board of area control. And in Kemet, there's these specific locations that give you certain things. If you're the one that controls them at the right time, you're able to reap the benefits from those locations. And you might want to be on specific ones. There's lots of interesting stuff and I can't go over all the aspects of both of these games. But I do want to say like my rating and how I would like each one. Um, so for Ankh, I did a review of this recently with the guys, and I gave Ankh a 9. I really enjoy Ankh, and I think it's an awesome game. I think the miniatures are great. I think the gameplay is great. I really enjoy the way it works. It has an interesting me merge mechanic, which it can be very divisive for a lot of players. And um, it's kind of like pseudo player elimination, but you kind of get to team up, and then if you get to a certain point, then your gods just get forgotten, and you kind of have to like figure out how to keep out of that zone so that way you're not going to be stuck in the merge and maybe if you are stuck in the merge you're away figuring out ways to work with the other player to like work your way up there but it can be a huge handicap for you um so i gave Ankh a nine i really enjoy Ankh, and it's a lot of fun kimmet i actually give a 9.5 i enjoy kimmet a ton i love the tug of war aspect of kimmet as you're trying to pull back and forth um for all of the different stuff and trying to like Figure out a way to like get permanent victory points so that way you can push yourself up to where the temporary victory points are going to push you across the line so that way you can win the game. A lot of fun with both of these games. I really enjoy Ankh and Kimmet both. If I could only own one, it's really hard because I enjoy both the games. I rate Kimmet highly, more highly because I really enjoy the mechanics in it more. But Ankh is such a beautiful game and it just looks amazing on the table. I love the miniatures. It'd be a lot of fun to paint that sort of thing up. I think you're not going to go wrong with either of these games. If you really enjoy air control and that style thing, definitely check out Ankh and check out Kimmet. I would probably say I would want Ankh in my collection, but if I had... It's crazy because I rate this higher, but I'd rather have this game. It's very strange, but I love them both. Definitely make sure to check out both these games and make the decision for yourself. Leave in the comments down below which one you like better, Ankh or Kimmet, and I'll see you on the next video.